I want to move on now to talk more about the weaponry that the rebels are using. David Raboy is Vice President of uh, Strategic Communications for the Center for Security Policy, joining us from our D.C. Bureau. Uh, Mr. Raboy, great to see you. Thank you for being here, sir. Thank you for having me, Jonathan. Now, uh, one, of the, uh, one of the things uh, that, uh, that you've pointed out to us, we, we have an article uh, uh, pointed out to us, we, we have an article uh, uh, up at foxnews.com about it now, is the appearance in the hands of the rebels of this rifle that we're just putting on screen is the most powerful, high-powered sniper rifle uh, in the world. What is the evidence that you have seen that the rebels are using these and in what numbers, if that's even possible to uh, uh, speculate about? Well, I'm not sure exactly if that is an original or if that has, uh, is actually a, a Chinese knockoff. Um, mm. the, the original is a, uh, is a UK made uh, weapon and uh, costs start at about uh, $10,000, $11,000 uh, uh, per, per unit. But uh, I'm sure the Chinese version is, uh, is, is much, much less expensive than that. Um, as far as proof, uh, to how widespread their usage is, I mean, we, we don't really know. We have one, this one video which, is, uh, which, which plainly shows a, uh, a brigade called Descendants of the Prophet. Um, now, this is a jihadi group uh, with extensive ties to Hamas. And uh, interestingly enough, this, this group is the reason for uh, Hamas getting kicked out of, uh, of, of Damascus. And... Um, and, uh, and ending its relationship with the, uh, with the Assad regime that was so close for many years. So the, how concerned should we be that these kind of weapons are in the hands of Islamist groups? It, it's not as if this is news that there are radicals right. uh, fighting in Syria and that they obviously are getting their hands on the kind of weapons that flow in uh, from, uh, from Eastern Europe in many uh, cases via chi from China to Eastern Europe uh, down into uh, Syria from Iran as well. Uh, how uh, should we be more concerned than we were last week? Um, yes, we should be very concerned. It was, uh, it was only a short time ago that the New York Times re revealed a, an interesting story about how Saudi and uh, Qatari money is being used to send um, arms into Syria through Croatia. And the, um, the, the Times wasn't really explicit about it, but uh, kind of a nod and wink uh, interview from, uh, from some, some CIA officials who knew quite a bit about the program so it's possible it's happening with the cooperation of the CIA we just we just don't know mm. um, is it a, is it a bad thing I think it's a horrible thing uh, um, the, but I guess the problem uh, David is is yes. what we see here is this this big question writ large once again of if we are going to help the rebel groups how on earth do we decide which ones we're going to help. We've been down this road before so many times. We saw what happened in Afghanistan. We help a bunch of rebels. Uh, ten years later, the, the guns are turned on us. I mean, is there an easy solution here? Well, uh, there's no easy solution. And I would even say, forget Afghanistan. We have an example as recent as last year mm. with, uh, with Benghazi. Right. Um, even the heavily whitewashed uh, report that, uh, that, that was put out by... Um, uh, by the uh, by, an independent commission uh, s bashed the State Department for having no idea who they were dealing with. They were dealing with they were they called in the February 17th Martyrs Brigade for security at, at the uh, at the consulate in Benghazi. Uh, I don't trust our intelligence uh, apparatus, our intelligence bureaucracy, to know really who the good guys are and who the bad guys are because they've removed they've removed the study of ideology. Um, out of the equation. So once you once you take out what these guys actually believe, um, all you're left with is uh, is competing personalities, mm. and that doesn't tell you very much about where they want to go uh, in the long run. So given that, given that uh, that you don't trust our intelligence, given that there are uh, all of these dozens, certainly dozens, possibly hundreds of differing groups uh, with dozens of differing aims and uh, and futures of Syria's. Uh, visions of uh, Syria's future, are we best just staying out of it and saying, okay, sort it out yourselves? That, that's my opinion. Hmm. Uh, that's, that's, uh, that's the opinion of uh, my organization, the Center for Security Policy, uh, securefreedom.org. Uh, you, you can learn more. 
Um, I, I just, uh, I think right now we're in a situation where, I mean, it, the, the civilian casualties um, are, are just horrible. They are horrific. Um, but if we go and we help the rebels, for example, then I, I think in, very sh in a very short time we'll be seeing uh, similar civilian casualties from, from the Alawite side or the Druze side or the, or the Christian side, the people who are loyal to the, the Assad regime primarily for, for uh, protection or, or clan-related uh, reasons. So either way, this is going to be a, a, a disaster. It's just a matter of uh, which bad guys, um, you know, we, we may be forced to help. I mean, okay. if, if so, so we cannot be the world's policemen in this situation, in your view. We have to leave the Syrian people and the various radical groups that have gone in there to fight to what is going to be a, an even bloodier end than we've seen. 70,000 dead. We still have to stand by and watch. Um, I don't think it's a matter of standing, standing by and, watch, and, and watching. I mean, if there's a, if there's a coherent... Um, if there's a coherent strategy or a, at least a template for figuring out who to deal with and who mm -hmm. not to deal with, it's not, I mean, what it comes down to now is, is that in, in Washington or where this intervention is being debated, they're talking about either, um, either su they're talking about supporting moderate Islamist groups like the Muslim Brotherhood uh, versus um, more, you know, we say more militant Salafi or, or, uh, or, or Al-Qaeda type, Al-Nusra front uh, type groups. And I say that's, a, that's just a bad equation. We should not be forced into making, uh, making that kind of a, a gamble because it will work out badly for us and for our allies. All right, David Raboy, uh, it's uh, fascinating to talk to you. Thank you, sir. Uh, David Raboy is Vice President of Strategic Communications at the Center for Security Policy. Uh, the website, centerforsecuritypolicy.org, and you can tweet him at Secure Freedom. Uh, David, thank you so much thank for being you. here. Really interesting talking to you.